hey, I just made this dope website with Wix. Let me show you how I did it. First, you go to Wix.com. Set yourself up a, a website and go to your template. Then get your text and then just type in dope website. How cool is that? But there's another way to make a dope website, and that's to not follow the rules that are known to all websites. And that's called web usability. So that's what I want to talk about now. The treatise on this is called Don't Make Me Think. And what web usability is, is it's the ease of use of a website. And for our class, we could probably expand this to include the ease of use of any kind of media we're going to use. So it's whether it's a a PowerPoint or whether it's a poster or whether it's a video or whether it's an embedded thing or whether it's a um, something in social media. Why is this type of stuff important? It's important because usable websites have more visitors. They make more money. They're just better websites in general. And, and think about it on your own. If you go to a crappy website, you're not going to stay there very long. How it affects your career? It affects you because you're going to be the person who is likely going to make some decisions about the content of the website, the designs of the website, the layout of the website. You might contract with graphics people to build that. So there's a whole variety of reasons you're going to be the person making some of these decisions. Usability is pretty straightforward. When you think about a web page, we don't really read web pages. We just scan over them. So you want to make pages kind of easy to scan. Let me go to Amazon. This is pretty easy to site, to scan. Here's, a, uh, here's a, uh, a video site for video equipment that's easy to scan. Uh, let me go to uh, The Voice, or The uh, Verge, which is easy to scan. So you can kind of see the things you're interested in, and then you click to get more information. When people browse websites, they don't make the best choices. They just simply satisfy. So they choose the first reasonable option. They're not going to sit there and look at the site and go, Oh, I wonder if this is the right thing to click. So we don't figure out how things work. We just muddle through it. We don't take the time to do it. The people, you know, you just have to make it easy to use. And that's part of the usability argument. So how do you design pages for usability? Well, first of all, you use a clear hierarchy on each page so that you understand what's going on. You take advantage of conventions, meaning Lots of sites do this, so why doesn't yours do similar things? And break the pages into clearly defined areas. And make it obvious what's clickable. So let's take a look at this. So normal conventions are that the title of the website or the home page goes back to home. You put items together in groups that are easy to find. You make it obvious by what's clickable that's pretty obvious. When, my, when the mouse goes over this, I can find out about new alien life. So that's very obvious what's clickable. And you group things together. Usually websites, the, the traditional norm is that websites often have the information at the bottom in terms of use, privacy, cookies, uh, communications preferences, who we are, and then a contact us page. So those are the norms that we would make websites by. People can't use their website if they can't find their way around it. You got a big no duh there. Of course. So you have to have meaningful navigation. And that means this. Can you tell from looking at the uh, can you tell from looking at the page how big is the site? Can you tell where are you on the site? Uh, does it have a site ID? Does every page have a name? Uh, so when you click on a page, does it look like you went to a completely different website? Uh, the norm and the, and the strategy is to always have your page ID on, the, on every page. And then if the site's big, more than you know, 10 or 20 pages, it should have a search function. Let's look at this, uh, this, uh, let's look at this site. This one does a really good job at this. This is a, uh, sh a shopping site for video equipment. They have a real bold search at the top. When I come over the things, I kind of can click on things, so I'll no, uh, let me go to a pro video stuff. I'll click on some uh, multi-purpose cameras here. So when I get to multi-purpose cameras, right in this area, 
This shows me where I am. I'm at home, professional video, industrial, and multi-purpose cameras. Here's the, uh, the, the ID, and I can go back to the ID. Uh, I know exactly where I am, and the navigation is easy. And it makes it much easier when they have navigation like this, so when I mouse over something, up comes all the sub-choices. So this makes this site very easy to search. Very easy to search means people will go here and they will pick stuff here rather than go to another competitor site. Uh, it, it, it's a good way of uh, ensuring that your site's successful. Street signs, I just pointed that out. That's what we had on that, uh, on that BH photo. Breadcrumbs and a site ID. These are all things that should be exactly on there. On the home page, it should have perhaps a mission, some details, shortcuts. Uh, if it's a site that uh, you need to register, it has to have a registration on it, a search, and it wants to have timely content. I'll show you a, a website in class in which the content is so old you just can't even believe it. I just hope they don't change the site because it's so bad I love to use it. You should also show people what they're looking for and kind of show them where to start. If you think about getting on a website, the, the main thing you want to do is have it be easy to use and have it be establish credibility and trust right away. Now, do we need to have a lot of extra words? No. So just get rid of all the, omit the needless words. Just use the, mac, the minimum words that it takes to get the job done. Now, so you click on the first page, then you click on the second page, then you click on the third page. The first page is just how to get to the information. The second page is a summary of the information. The third page is all the details. So you can just simply drill down into content as you need it. It's one of the strategies for writing a, writing a, um, writing a website. On the home page, don't put a lot of extra crap. Don't put a lot of extra happy talk that's you know, makes people feel good, oh, this is us, this is us, you know, welcome to the wonderfulest site in the world. You don't need all that stuff. Um, and you certainly don't need instructions. Please click here. Follow this to get there. You know, people are smarter than that. You know, you, if you make them feel like they're um, inadequate or they can't browse a site, it makes your site look like you're, you're stupid. We don't want that. So I'm talking now about how to get this, how to figure out whether a website is good. And the biggest thing you need to do is to test a website. Uh, usability testing on the cheap, I'm going to call this. It's real easy. If you want a great site, you've got to test it. And testing one user is 100% better than testing none. So this doesn't have to be complicated. Testing one user at the beginning is better than testing 50 users at the end because websites cost money to build. They take time. They take people's energy. Uh, it's a lot of work getting a website up. So you get a website up and you get, you get the thing done and then you ask 50 people to look at it and all 50 people say, boy, this doesn't work at all. If you had tested one person at the beginning and say, hey, this doesn't work at all, you could have saved a lot, a lot of work and a lot of money. Ideally, you want to test three to four users. And so what you test is you test, look at this website. Do you get it? Is, is it obvious what to do? Let me go to a site and see. Let me just uh, find a site here. So Amazon. Is it obvious what to do? Well, it's kind of obvious, yeah. You can, you can search for stuff. The search is gigantic on Amazon. Um, you have the obvious places to go to find your content. You have the obvious stuff at the bottom. It's pretty straightforward. If I go to The Verge, is it obvious what to do? I think it is. Yeah, sure. But if you go to some of these cool guys' sites that have all kinds of uh, abnormal things, you, you look and you go, I don't even know what this is. Where am I supposed to click? I'll show you some of these in class. They're just terrible. Second thing you want to do is you want to find out key tasks. So. Can you get to the Department of Communications web part of the website on suskwift.edu? Uh, can you use it? How, how long does it take? How, how easy is it to find stuff? Uh, if you want to check out, how does the checkout work? If you want to select an item and drop it into a cart, how does it work? And then you can review the results right away. It doesn't take a long time to do this. And then what you do is you figure out how to fix the problems. So 
when you're building a website, you might say, oh, this looks really good. This works really well. Then you test with your two or three people and you go, ooh, <laughs> that was pretty dumb. That doesn't work at all. So how you test, it's pretty informal. What you do is you set up a, a test environment where you record the person talking, sort of like I'm talking right now on the screen, and you say to them, hey, uh, I'm interested in seeing how this website works. There's no wrong answers. I just need your feedback. I just want to see what's going on with it. Then you record the screen and the user and see what's going on. It doesn't have to be difficult. 30 minutes or so should be plenty of time for testing.